Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda and today I wanted to share with you a kind of small beginning of the year book haul. I believe in January I did a book haul but since then I've just been collecting books and I don't have enough each month to do like a full book haul so I figured I'd do more of like a quarterly or a trimesterly book haul whatever you want to call it. So right now I've got books that I've been saving up from February now to April. We'll include January in there just to make it um, the <laughs> months divisible by the year by, you know, four groups of three months. So I figured it'll work for me. So the first book I have is something my friend and I were planning to do, but we haven't exchanged a book since February and we were going to do a blind date with a book for each month of the year. Um, so for the month of February I bought her a copy. Um, I found an Alcrate copy of the um, Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. So it had the Alcrate special edition cover and I got that for her. And so her first pick for me was The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I haven't read this yet. Um, it's not really in a genre that I read a lot of. It's kind of a bit of a mystery in there, but it also seems like it has a little bit of magical realism. So I think that will help with the more unfamiliar kind of genre than what I'm used to. Um, it's a national bestseller and it's just got a stunning cover. So I hope to get to this soon. Um, and it's kind of fun because this isn't a book that I would have picked up for myself. So I'm going to have to ask her if we're still planning to do that for the year. Maybe we'll skip a couple months like <laughs> since we already have, but we'll see. So this is the first book I have. And then I also, um, my brother's girlfriend was going through some of her stuff and it, um, they asked me if I wanted to take the books to my favorite used bookstore. So I went through her box and I got three books actually. One of them I've already put away. Let me grab it really fast if I can. Um, there it is. Alright, so I chose three books out of the box. The first one that I had put away was the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. This is by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. I um, actually borrowed a copy from my coworker, and then after I finished reading it, I found this copy in um, my brother's girlfriend's donate box. So I have a copy for myself. And like I said, I have already read this book. I really liked it. Um, it's fun. It's told in letter format. It's essentially about a woman who wrote a column in her best friend's brother's newspaper during World War II as kind of like a woman's point of view on the war. Um, and then afterwards, she is, those columns were turned into a book, and then she's kind of trying to find the next... Um, next project for her and she ends up exchanging letters with this man named Dozzy who is on the island of Guernsey and he tells her about um, what it was like living on Guernsey as it was occupied by the Germans during World War um, II and then how this impromptu literary society grew out of um, a pig roast and it was just a good story I thought it was really interesting um, you we hear a lot about like mainland European countries and how they were affected by the war but things like islands don't really I feel like get talked about a whole lot so it was interesting to see what it was like to be on an island and be occupied by Germany as well so that was a book I really enjoyed. The next book I picked out was Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet by Jamie Ford and this is a signed copy. Um, honestly, I don't remember what this is about but I thought it would be worth seeing if I liked it, especially since it's a signed copy. It's always fun to have signed copies on the bookshelf. Um, basically... Um, 
I'll read the synopsis. It's in 1986, Henry Lee joins a crowd outside the Panama Hotel, once the gateway to Seattle's J uh, Japantown. It has been boarded up for decades, but now the new owner has discovered the belongings of Japanese families who were sent to internment camps during World War II. As the owner displays and unfurls a Japanese parasol, Henry, a Chinese-American, remembers a young Japanese-American girl from his childhood in the 1940s, Keiko um, Okabe, with whom he forged a bond of friendship and innocent love that transcended the prejudices of their Old World ancestors. After Keiko and her family were evacuated to the internment camps, she and Henry could only hope that their promise to each other would be kept. Now, 40 years later, Henry explores the hotel's basement for the Okabe family's belongings and for a long-lost object whose value he cannot even begin to measure. His search will take him on a journey to revisit the sacrifices he has made for family, for love, for country. Um, so, it's a historical fiction. And I do, I mean, if you can tell, I do like the World War II era. So I thought this would be interesting. And like I said, it was a signed copy. So I thought I would give it a shot. And then the other book I picked was Abdication by Juliet Nicholson. Um, this takes place in England in 1936. Um, a beloved king is dead, and by year's end, the charismatic new monarch will give up his throne for love. The world is on the brink of war, and in the tumultuous intervening months, three outsiders will find themselves embroiled in the hidden truths, undeclared loves, unspoken sympathies, and covert compli complicities of a glittering high society in the throes of, a of upheaval. So, another World War II based novel that I thought was interesting. And the last two books I have are books that I bought off Amazon. The first is The Fork, the Witch, and the Worm, Tales from Allegasia, Volume 1, um, from Aragon, by Christopher Polini. This is, I believe it's three stories, and it's basically the fairy tales that the kids in Allegasia grew up hearing. Um, I know this, I think, I want to say, like, this was released in December of 2018, and I remember like Jesse from Jesse the Reader and um, Kat from Catty Tastic, Katie Tastic, were talking about this because I know they were doing a Blixposian, um read of Aragon, and then this was kind of also sent to them by the publisher as well. So I had no idea this was being published. Um, Aragon is one of those series I grew up reading, and I actually finished the last two books. I did a reread of the first two books and finished the last two books last year via audiobook and I thought that this would be fun to just kind of read through so I can live in the world just a little bit longer. And then the other book I picked up is because um, I want to watch the movie and that is Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott. Um, this is about two teenagers that have, um, oh gosh, what is it? Um, I don't think it says, but um, they have something wrong with their lungs. It's a specific condition or disease that I'm totally blanking on right now. But um, basically, they can't be more than six feet. They can't be less than six feet apart from each other and they form a bond and a friendship in the hospital and a relationship and so they kind of test that bounds of is it really six feet or can we shorten that to five. Um, so that's kind of their story and I grew up watching The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and Cole Sprouse has grown up to be one looking young man so that's honestly the main reason that I want to read this book but um, I think it's interesting also to hear about um, not only like young people with disabilities but also diseases and how they cope through that I don't think this is own voices so I don't know how telling it really is um, of uh, that's really gonna bother me what is it called? 
I'm sure some of you are screaming at me because you know what it is. Um, but anyway, I do think it's interesting to have that take um, and just kind of cystic fibrosis. I wanted to say fibromyalgia, but I knew that wasn't right. Okay, cystic fibrosis. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's interesting to have that representation in books and just kind of learn more um, because it's kind of easy to to forget if you don't deal with a disease or anything like that, um, that it can impact young people as well. So I think it's something important to read and be mindful of. So those are my couple of books that I have hauled over these past few months. Um, I'm actually surprisingly not hauling as many books as I normally would have. I have b bought a couple books on my Kindle and on Audible and the like, but I'm trying really hard to just stick with reading what's on my shelves and not making any unnecessary purchases. So I would love to know if you've read any of these books. If so, what were your thoughts on them? Um, should I prioritize any book over any of the others? Please do let me know down in the comments below and I will chat with you there until my next video. Bye.